Good morning and welcome to our service of morning worship. Do find a, a seat. So let's just come before God this morning and quieten our hearts. We are this morning going to be looking at um, going through the Psalms again and we are looking at Psalm 30 this morning and Adam is going to be speaking to us a little later about that. So everything you'll need this morning is on the screen so please join in with the words in bold. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us worship God. So let's worship God this morning with our first song which is Praise is Rising. Oh 
So our reading this morning, as I said, was from, is from um, Psalm 30. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depth and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me from the realms of the dead and you sh spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay in the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favour me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hide your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silent? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing your praise and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, nice to see you. Let's pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, as we've just heard, we <coughs> are going to continue looking at the Psalms. I do apologise if my voice breaks in the middle of this service. This is uh, Sermon 3 of 5 today, <laughs> or service, so it might go, but I'll just take a break and have a sip of water, and you can uh, shuffle around in your seats if we need to have a, have a break. But as we've just heard, we're carrying on looking at the Psalms, and for the last few weeks, the last four weeks, we've done... Um, some pretty heavy psalms haven't we we've done the psalms of lament and the psalms of grief and it culminated on last sunday when we we wrote down some of our own laments and griefs uh, and losses and we and we brought them to god in our own kind of psalm of lament but i don't want to leave you with the impression that the psalms are only about grief pain loss lament all those things we've been looking at we did, we did though, we looked at those psalms because we were looking for something to help us. Help us through uh, the trials and challenges we go through in life. When we hit sticky times, when, uh, when life seems dark and despairing, we were looking for something to help us. And we found those psalms of lament. They give us a language. They give us a way of expressing what's going on in our lives, what's going on inside of us, and getting it out there and giving it to God. But the Psalms are not just for those times in life. They are for all seasons of life. And the Psalm we're looking at today, Psalm 30, talks about a different kind of experience. It's not talking about necessarily things just being good, although it is a, a Psalm about good things happening. It's a psalm about that moment when you've been through the, ri the ringer, when you have been through a dark time, when you've been through despairing times, when you've been in those places where the psalms of lament are. You've been through those, but you've actually arrived somewhere else. 
you've actually got through that experience and actually you find yourself in a new place with a new lease of life, a new found joy after the despair. Though weeping may come in the night, joy comes in the morning, is the words that the psalm uses. And I wonder if you can ever have, have ever experienced that. Experience that moment where you've been in a dark place and one morning you wake up and everything isn't quite as bad as it was yesterday. The world which seemed very grey suddenly seems a bit more colourful. Maybe you start noticing things like birds singing again. Maybe you realise you're just standing up a little bit straighter. You've got a bit more skip in your step. That feeling of a new lease of life. And that's what Psalm 30 is about. Because in Psalm 30 it starts, in fact, let's, let's look at how it starts. It starts, I will exalt you, O Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths. I will exalt you, O Lord, for you lifted me from the depths. And did not let my enemies gloat over me. O Lord my God, I called to you for help. And you answered me. You healed me. O Lord, you brought me up from the grave. You spared me from going down into the pit. This is someone looking back at a dark time in their life. And realising that they've been saved. That they are in a new place. That God has turned that situation around in some way. That they found healing. They found that they've got their zest for life back. That is the experience that's being described in Psalm 30. And there are lots of Psalms like this. And we're going to look at some of them. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you some, uh, some words okay, uh, that might help explain this. So you have psalms which kind of are about how good life is, okay? And you get that and it's like, life is great, God is good, everything's as it should be, okay? And these psalms are called psalms of orientation. That means you're, or, you know, orientated. Everything feels good. You know, you, you're where you're meant to be. Life is good. And then there are psalms which talk about things that spin you off your orientation that disorientate you so they're the psalms we talk, looked at don't we so you know you life is good and then something happens boom suddenly you're all at sea and you know you, you've completely lost your sense of where you are those are the psalms of disorientation and then there are moments in life when we go through that experience of disorientation and suddenly we find kind of our feet are on solid ground again and we find ourselves centered again that life suddenly as we were describing has a new energy to it a new lease of life and there are psalms like these like the one we described here and they're called psalms of new orientation or psalms of reorientation so it's like the experience of being spun off course and then finding your way back again and that's what these psalms are about, the psalms we're going to do for the next couple of weeks. Psalms of new orientation. <clears throat> and one of the things that the psalms of new orientation talk about is what happens, uh, how do you get from the despair to the new lease of life? And the answer in the psalms always is that we don't know. We don't know. There's no process, there's no formula, there's no kind of self-help manual which gets you from despair to a new lease of life. It just happens sometimes. It can't be explained. I'm not saying there aren't things that you can do which are not helpful, so things like counselling, talking to friends, grieving, lamenting, letting it out, crying, all those things are helpful, but the thing that gets you to this new lease of life is something that can't be explained it's not something that can be predicted it's not something that can be manufactured 
It's something that happens by surprise. And the experience being described here is one of surprise. Surprise at what God has done. Surprised by grace. God does it. And we can't predict it and we can't explain it. But God does it. And that is how we receive new life. It's what we call grace. It's not something that's in our control. It's not something that we can earn by doing a lot of good deeds or giving our money to the poor or you know, even getting on our knees and praying hard enough. It's grace. It's something that God just does. And that is what is being described in this psalm. And the result of that is a new appreciation of life. The person who comes to this new place is not going back to the old place before the bad thing happened. They're seeing life in a new way. And in fact, he talks about this in the psalm, doesn't he? He says this, he says, When I felt secure, before life got difficult, I said, I shall never be shaken. I shall never be shaken. O oh Lord, when you favoured me, you made my mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face... I was dismayed. You see, what he is recognising and acknowledging is that he took his life for granted. He took the good things in his life for granted. He was complacent. And when he was spun off his axis by whatever it is, now we have no idea what he's talking about. We only know the description of the experience. But it doesn't matter what happened because all of us We'll know that feeling, won't we? Of being spun off our axis by whatever it is. He says, until that happened, I took things for granted. And now I've gone through this experience, I arrive at a new place where I appreciate things differently. And the thing that he, he is now, more than anything, is grateful. He says, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That is what he says through the whole psalm. And this new sense, a new lease of life, gives us a new appreciation of something. In some ways, to arrive at this place is actually better than where we were right at the beginning. And that's not to say that to go through the bad thing is good. <laughs> To go through the bad thing is something we want. But what it is saying is that God steps into these situations by his grace and brings about something new for us. Now for, for us, when we think about this, let's just think about this in terms of the pandemic. Okay, We had our life before the pandemic and we kind of knew where we were. We, you know, we were orientated. The pandemic came in and spun our lives off their axis. But God will step in and the pandemic will end. And we will build our lives back again. And it will be a new kind of life. It won't be the same as what it was before. It will be a new kind of life. And I think it's important for us to be really aware of what that new life will feel like. Because it won't just be like what was before. Because it can't be like what was before. But hopefully, if we are attentive, it will be better. Because we will be thankful. And we won't be complacent. And we won't take for granted the good things of our lives. Because they've been taken away from us during this time. Now... If you're in that place now, actually, if you've been through a difficult time and you're starting, you've, you're waking up and you're like, actually, I've arrived at a better place. I have a new lease of life. Give thanks. Give thanks. Don't just move on and pretend nothing happened. Give thanks and say it out loud. Say it out loud. I am thankful that where I am now is not where I was before. But I know for many of us, we, we might not be in that place yet. 
And that's the thing, that this is not something that can be predicted, it's not on a schedule, it just happens. If you're not there, please don't ignore these psalms either. Even if you're not there yet, read these psalms and allow them to stir hope in you that one day you will be there. Trust that God saves that God steps in and makes things new. And pray, pray, ask God. God, get me to the place where I can be like the writer of Psalm 30. And say, you lifted me out of the pit. You lifted me up. You heard my cry. Pray for that. I'm just going to finish by reading the last verses again. And maybe let's close our eyes as we hear these. And maybe you want to say these words because you're thankful you're thankful that you have gone through something and you feel like you're coming out the other side and you know life is starting to 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 be pieced back together or maybe you're not there yet but you want to be or you you, you, that's where you, you you're praying God will lead you to let's listen to these words and make them our prayer of thanks or make them our prayer of trust Lord, you turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. That my heart may sing to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. Amen. We're going to uh, have a song now. Uh, it's a song that we've played a few times and uh, a song that I just encourage you to allow the words to speak to you. It's, it's, a, it's an upbeat song. It is a song uh, about God's faithfulness in never letting us go. So let's have yes and amen.
So let's pray. We're going to just hold some silence as we invite the Holy Spirit to move among us, to move in our lives. Lord, step into our situation, our felt reality, where we are right now. Lord, we we pray for those people and situations that you're putting on our hearts right now. Lord, if we feel disorientated, heal our brokenness. Give us a new lease of life. Bring us out of the darkness and give us your peace. Holy Spirit, move among us. So let us join together and say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to have our final song of our service, which is a good old hymn called Praise the Lord, Praise to the Lord, or the Almighty. Oh, yeah. 
So just before we have um, our final blessing, just wanted to share a story with you. Um, just thinking about what Adam said before. A few years ago, um, my nan died, and oh, get myself together. And I couldn't grieve for her until after the funeral because I actually did the funeral. So I had to stand up here and be that person who could do the funeral. And it was on a Friday and it went brilliantly and got through it all really well. When we had a lovely afternoon tea, because my nan didn't drink, we had afternoon tea um, afterwards. And it was amazing, absolutely amazing. I still didn't grieve, I still didn't feel that sadness, nothing. And then I got up on the Saturday morning and it was the worst Saturday of my life. Cried the whole day, it was absolutely awful. But on the Sunday, I woke up and my first thought was the, a joyous memory of my nan. And it was that start of that healing. And it was like a light bulb had gone on. And I'd come out of that darkness of the Saturday to that joy of remembering some lovely memories of my nan. Now I know we're all in different situations and we may not be ready to be able to do that. But just know that it does happen. We can come out of that darkness. And God does it at the most unexpected times. So let's have our, our blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. So let's go in, pe in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. <laughs>